This is Chip, and I wanted to show you a piece really quick I call it the scream and as I show you I'm gonna make my commentary uh, behind it I think one of the best learning tools is learning why a director or why a filmmaker made some decisions and I think with this short piece this is one that really uh, pushed me I did this in 2010 pushed me create uh, my creativity and um, it, it just wasn't the same so the backstory is that um, I work with a foundation <clears throat> uh, here in Baltimore called the William E. Proudford uh, Sickle Cell Foundation, uh, and it is headed up by Karen Proudford, is uh, from her dad, and uh, we've done uh, many videos for them over the years. But this one in 2010 was so different because she brought to me a poem, and wanted the poem to be uh, actually animated and to be read by by a narrator and to be said. So. Let's go for it. Let's watch, and I will stop throughout the uh, throughout the presentation to make my uh, director's commentary. Okay, so right there, as soon as the music, as soon as the nice, you, you, you see the transition. It goes from the melodic uh, melody uh, until the bam, the hard hitting, like this is serious. And we wanted to make sure that we're talking about sickle cell here. And we're talking about blood, of course. So we're going to use the white, red, and black. Uh, and we wanted to give people uh, an idea about what sickle cell was. And especially with this slide right here very basic and uh, very powerful to me and and really says this causes a sickle cell crisis so a lot of patients have crises and you know I, I would never know what that is because I don't have the disease but it just for me you know it, it, it means pain and everybody can relate to pain so we want to capitalize those two words and I think that uh, was Karen's idea to make sure that we emphasize uh, crises and pain so as soon as we go into that we're gonna go straight into the poem And uh, the the person who wrote the poem did not want to be identified, so we just kept it anonymous, even though we know who she is. But uh, uh, that's why it says a poem by a woman living with sickle cell uh, disease. So we want to make sure we do that. Hard not being in the world among people who find it odd and slightly offensive that instead of speaking while passing. So what I want to do right there, I'm just going to pause. So what that is, um, and uh, my good friends over at Media Storm know about this, and where I learned it's called a video portrait, where you have someone just standing and looking. And usually it's when um, music bed is going or narration like that. So we really did a video portrait, and we had a great narrator, uh, Crystal Smith, who read for us, and uh, uh, she read uh, most of the poem. So we'll, we'll go back and we'll go ahead and deconstruct this some more. At the sidewalk in search of flaws. So you see right here my cinematographer, Eric Dotson, uh, from the Market Media Group. He um, did a rack focus. And, um, you know, with DSLRs, this was shot with, I think, either the 5D or the 7D, 5D Mark II or 7D. Can't remember. But I know that, that rack focuses can be high risk, high reward. And if they're done well, they can, they can, they can, they can really bring out a piece. And we made sure we were in the sound stage where we had depth. And uh, my lighting director made sure that we we lit people in a certain way. Where even if they were, I think they were maybe a couple of feet behind each other, uh, maybe maybe twelve inches, maybe one foot behind each other. They could we could still see them. And we want to make sure that all of our actors. And all of our actors were in black. We want to make sure that it was minimal as possible. Uh, we had makeup artists there. Uh, uh, we want to have them minimal jewelry. And we just want to control a lot. Since we usually when we do these types of pieces, we interview people. We don't have a lot of control over what people wear. We don't have control over, you know, what they really say. But this one I kind of had creative control about where the blocking was, where I wanted them to stand. And I want the, wanted them to stand uh, like like this. Many don't understand how much it takes away from a body, what feels alone, 
to exert just enough energy, release just enough oxygen. Okay, I want to just pause right here. Um, many of you all may know that sickle cell is is mainly a, a, a disease affecting many uh, minorities, African Americans. We wanted to make sure that we had some um, some Caucasians, some some people from other backgrounds in the video because even though it may affect African Americans, it can affect all of us and and their supporters. So we want to make sure that we have uh, age range, we had race, uh, we had height. And I think this, th these folks right here really, really made uh, a good appearance in the video. And purse the lips just so to say, good morning. All right, so what we do, we go from, I'm just going to go back a little bit. And we're going to go back, and if you see, we have everybody um, blocked like this. And we have two the two shot, all right? And even in the, the beginning shot, we have them um, on the side. So we have them... Oxygen. And then we go from there. And then when, after the narrator stops, we go right to the center of. Lips just so to say. Good morning. Good afternoon. All right. So we have all people frame center. We want to make sure that when uh, the narration, the characters, the actors first speak, we want them to be the subject. We don't want any white on the right or left. We want them to be the main subject of this piece. Good evening. And then we do a, a close-up shot. So a lot of times with these pieces, we want to do the wide, the medium, and then the close-up. We really didn't do too too many wide shots. We did medium, and we did uh, a medium close-up, I'll call that. Good afternoon. Good evening. This exercise being even harder to execute. This is one of my favorite shots right here. I'm going to let let the scene play through. I'm going to rewind it let the, and tell you why. This is one of my favorite shots. And I think sometimes in video, you have a shot that, that a lot of people call the money shot. And to me, this is a money shot because you don't ask actors and when you're working with them, you know, they put their own spin on things. And all you can do as a director, as a filmmaker, to make sure that you, you tell them where you want to go with the piece. So let's let, let's go back. Let's see what she does. Good evening. This exercise being even harder to execute in a constant state of depression. Okay. So a constant state of depression. Now did you notice her eyes? Her eyes. And then we pulled out, we even have we have we show the microphone. We show that we're in a sound stage. We see some other artifacts behind her. And then we have the 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 motion graphics come out and um, you see that right there we have the motion graphics come out as she's looking down constant state of depression i think sometimes the subtle things matter actually a lot of times the subtle things matter in this so as we told her depression. smiling of course is even worse although it may make up for a greeting unuttered it empties the soul of all honesty and you can't, that right there is one of my other favorite lines. It empties the soul of all honesty. How she delivers that line. I think uh, a lot of time it's in the, the delivery, the presentation of a line. Uh, it's, it's like getting a plate of food and putting it on a, a piece of china or, or a garbage uh, top. So you want to make sure when you actors, they deliver these lines and, and, and they're believable. And they're not just, you know, just saying it, but they actually at least to the viewer, it we really believe it. Esteem opens up the body. This is not one of my favorite shots. Um, I don't know why. Maybe because it just feels soft to me. Um, but it, it, it's it's we used it uh, probably to my better judgment. Now you always want to go back and do things to projects, but and then she's kind of looking off camera. If you see, she's looking that way, and then she comes back on this way. To all who see in the eyes what the lips attempt to hide, keep secret. Now, I like that shot as well. And then what all attempt to hide with the lips keep inside, keep secret. So then we do, Eric does another rack focus, and then we put her out of focus, and then she pulls right into focus. So let's watch that. Let's watch a sequence real quick. But the lips attempt to hide, keep secret. And he really didn't have that much time to do that. And then in the edit, what you'll see, as soon as she says keep secret, We'll hear the next gentleman come right on before we see him. So that is our J cut right there because we hear the audio before we see the video. So let's go back a couple of frames. 
And let's see this. attempt to hide. Keep secret. Too strange to walk in this world alone, non-speaking. But screaming. At very precise intervals. And too selfish to think only of oneself while engaging in this particular ritual. Now we left her on camera for for a little bit. We 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 introduced different actors in there. And as you see, you're seeing different ones. You're like, my gosh, how many more people are coming? And, um, you know, we had to choose where to put the person and what line to get the person. Um, at this moment, I can't remember why we chose the young lady, but I think that she has the look that's just very good, very, in, in that line, she delivered it really well. For fear of being labeled crazy, insane. Courtesies are exchanged. We socialize. Now that is my probably favorite line. She pauses, she looks down. We had to do this like three or four times, but if you look at uh, what she is doing, I think her name is Lisa. Courtesies are exchanged. We socialize. Gums, taste buds, tonsils, pharynx. Long enough and just so to resonate one's voice. Okay, this was a high risk, high reward shot. Another one, uh, Eric really did a long uh, rack focus on this. I like it, uh, but to get it in, we're like, pull it in. Come on, Eric, come on, come on. He's going, and uh, you really have to use uh, the follow focus really well with this. There's no way uh, to do this without a good follow focus. So uh, this high risk, high reward shot worked out a little longer probably than I would like it to be, but uh, I, I, th I think it works. And free one's spirit of all pain, nicely packaged in a she string. While others calmly pass the spot designated at this particular interval in time as your own. Calmly pass with the understanding in time and we introduced a little camera shake there, if you notice. Um, it's on a tripod, but yet we wanted to have it, um, you know, have the shake in, in, in the camera. And uh, a good cinematographer would really, really knows who, who, who knows he or she who knows how to shoot, knows how to uh, do that. They, too, will be fixed in much the same position. Another good shot because we follow the poem. We say they too will be fixed in another position. So let's go back. Let's listen to that. So we have him camera left. They too will be fixed in much the same position. Feet planted, arms reaching. And then we say arms reaching. We have, we told the actor to make sure he has his sleeves up and then his arms are down. Face pointing towards the atmosphere. Now, of course, when she said face pointing toward the atmosphere, the cliche thing would be to do to have them all looking up. But sometimes you want the you want the words and to carry and you don't want to take away. The actors are there, but the key for this, uh, this is the poem. And, and you want to get across, at least uh, to me, why that you're there. And, and it's because of this poem. It's because of this crisis. We're air. God will accept your pain. Okay, so that is the end of it. And then we have some credits and some other things. So uh, the words came out a little bit fast for me, but how we wanted to end it. And, and, and a big shout out to Miles uh, Fabishak for doing the uh, motion graphics on this. And uh, I think that how we ended it was how God will accept your pain. We're air and clouds and God will accept your pain. And it really ends in a way where you're like, okay, you, you either say, wow, that was, you know, a uh, creative genius, or you say, what in the world did I just see? <laughs> so the choice is up to the viewer. Uh, the thing is, is that you want to make sure we end it with pain. We started with pain and we ended with pain and red on black words that sums it all up because sickle cell is a painful disease and we want to make sure our call to action and then we go right there about awareness education hope we still have the ominous music playing and we do that again we keep on looping the music and then we talking about uh some different organizations and then uh we go uh uh to uh some other things that we're we're working on partnerships and then and then we go to uh who is named after uh, mr proudford and uh, this was back in five years of service, giving sickle cell a voice. And then there he is right there, Mr. Proudford, 
who um, who this uh, this is named after. So I wanted to just give you an overview, uh, just a director's kind of cut into it. And when I'm teaching these things, and sometimes they're not just so black and white. There's some abstract things you may do. There are a lot of students I have there in art school that, that we look at things and you say, hey, is that art <laughs> or is that just garbage? I mean, and I guess it's in the eye of a beholder, but I'm hoping that you enjoyed this and as I deconstructed uh, this uh, uh, video, and I'll be doing a lot more of these, uh, uh, especially when it comes to uh, things that are not so cut and dry. Thanks and take care.